Good morning, everyone. And on behalf of, PP, of the PPS group, I'd just like to thank you for taking the time today to join us. My name is Razi Christians, and I'm the National Business Development Manager for PPS Investments. Since January, we have been communicating with you about your PPS RA and the 0% admin fee offer available to you. And this session is actually about answering key questions that you, our members, have actually been asking us over the last few months. And we thought it best to actually go straight to the source and make sure we bring out the big eaters to ensure that you can hear directly from the leaders driving this particular opportunity. Our first speaker is the chairperson of the PPS RA Fund, Mr. James Downey. James has been the chairman of the fund for the last 10 years. He's also a board member of the PPS Holding Trust and a board member of the PPS Insurance Company. And James has been an independent retirement fund trustee for over 25 years and very proud to say that he's a PPS member for 30 years. And he will be providing you with insight into the vision of the board, why the offer and why now. Also joining us is another James, our Chief Operating Officer here at PPS Investments, James Frazier. And James has been in the financial industry for over a decade and has fulfilled many roles during this time. And he's very well versed in all matters within our business. And over the last five years, has been a key driver in implementing the strategic enhancements within PPS Investments. And he will focus on the impact of costs of your retirement save, of the retirement um, savings and the tools that we've actually built to assist you in making the right decision for your order. So please make sure that you keep the questions or post your questions that you do have towards our CEO and the chairman of the board um, on our on the chat group as well. We will we do have a few slides that we'll be talking through, but we've made sure that there is ample time to actually address any of the questions that you do have. So we'll be happy to actually feel feel them at the end. Um, so right now I'd like to start our discussion by talking about evolution. For me, evolution is a gradual, steady journey, and we don't see the constant changes that it, that actually takes place until enough time has actually passed. And something that is so fundamental to our daily lives and met our needs at that particular point in time ends up looking archaic now when we look back. And it's easy to relate to what the landline phone did for us 30 years ago compared to what the smartphone provides us today. Our needs have ultimately changed. Our lives have adapted and we have ended up needing something completely different. And so the smartphone now becomes the new fundamental thing in our, in our daily lives. Similarly, PPS has evolved over the last 79 years from providing income protection in 1941 to a fully diversified financial group today, adapting over time to the ever-changing needs of our members now providing you with investments and short-term medical aid, insurance company. We have estate planning, wills and trusts. We have financial planning. The list just goes on. We've really adapted to the needs of our clients and our members that we have that they have today. But through all this evolution, the one thing that has not changed is our core values. We are still a member-focused business and all our decisions are still made with our members' best interests at heart. So to talk about the evolution of the PPS RA fund, as well as the vision it has for its members, I'll now hand over to James Downey, the chairman of the PPS RA fund. James. Thanks, Razik. Uh, and welcome to everybody that's listening. Uh, I hope you use the facility on the bar below to ask your questions. We're very happy to answer those questions at the end of the presentation. I think if we go back a bit and taking a, a leaf out of Rosic's uh, evolution slide um, with the, the old phone and the, the new smartphone, uh, the PPSRA or Retirement Annuity Fund was launched 60 years ago in very close association with Sunlum. In fact, in those days and for many years thereafter, PPS members bought a Sunlum RA. Uh, it, PPS didn't have its own insurance license. Uh, it didn't have the facility to launch its own retirement annuity policies. And so there was Sunlum RAs. In 2010, PPS launched its own uh, investment business, PPS Investments, 
which allowed members to essentially venture into the world of smartphones when it came to retirement annuities. And this developed over the next couple of years uh, until the point where we closed the fund, the, the Sunlum section of the fund to new business, but we continue to fully service and look after the members who have Sunlum uh, policies. They're still the vast majority of our members and they're the ones that, that we look after as carefully as we do in the so-called Section B of the fund. From the day we launched Section B or the PPSI part of the uh, fund, it has been possible for members to switch within the fund between the Sunlum section into the PPS section. And I think that's an important point to, to bear in mind. From day one, those intra-fund conversions have been possible. You're not transferring from one fund to another, which is cumbersome. It involves paperwork to the uh, regulator. It involves disinvesting from one fund and investing into another. It's a very simple process to switch within the fund from one part to the other. And I think that's the important distinction we really want to, to draw today, um, that it's a very simple process, uh, in fact, seamless process. The uh, Sunlum section of the fund uh, was absolutely appropriate for its time. Uh, it continues to be appropriate for certain members, but it does come with uh, the disadvantage that all insurance company retirement annuities have. And it's not just Sunlum, it's Mutual, Liberty, uh, Metropolitan Momentum have exactly the same uh, disadvantage where if you stop your retirement annuity earlier than you plan to, the insurance company in, uh, applies a penalty. And so while that ability to switch has always been in the fund, the cost of the penalty was too severe for many members to uh, take advantage of that switch. What has happened over the last 10 years is that we've been monitoring the, the levels of those penalties likely to be um, uh, li likely to be invoked by Sunlum. And we're now at a stage where for a substantial portion of our members, those penalties are small enough or even zero in some cases to absolutely justify that intra-fund conversion. Uh, I think perhaps if we move on to the next slide. So what we've done to facilitate that for the members is to, for a short period of time, a six month period this year, uh, is to make it even easier for members to do that intra-fund conversion. It's a very simple process. Um, and for that period of time, you will be able to enjoy for an extended period, 0% admin fee. That means you can switch out of the Section A or Sunlum section of the fund into the Section B, where you have access to a broad range of PPS unit trusts, from, and you'll see it in James Fraser's section of the presentation, um, from conservative funds to aggressive funds and everything in between. The, the added advantage is that you will then, by dint of your investment, uh, earn additional profit share in, on your uh, profit share in, in PPS, along with all the other products that you use in PPS. And you have complete flexibility. You can stop your premiums when you want. You can increase them. You can top them up in February every year without any form of penalties or early termination clauses uh, to affect your decision making. It's completely flexible. And you can obviously retire, uh, mature it whenever you want to as well. And perhaps an example or two um, to, to demonstrate that uh, how, how the offer works on the next slide. So 
if you're a member who's older than 61, then the that zero admin fee will uh, be in place as long as you're in the PPS unit trusts. That zero admin fee will be uh, for five years or until they choose to retire. So a minimum of five years or longer. If you're younger than 61, then if say, for example, in the slide, a 54 year old client does an intrafund conversion, that zero admin fee offer will last for 12 years because it will last until uh, age 66. Age 66, as James Fraser will explain, um, is the, the age that we've chosen uh, for other reasons within PPS. Um, and so that 54 year old will get zero admin fee for 12 years. And that's the sort of thing we're asking members to have a look at with their advisors to check if there is a small uh, termination fee, for example, to check whether that saving in admin fee doesn't completely wipe out that uh, small termination fee uh, that might be imposed by Sunlum on the intrafund conversion. Um, and I think to hand over to, to James Fraser now, the Chief Operations Officer of PPSI or PPS Investments, um, to uh, elaborate on some of the detail. Thanks very much. Seems like we're having a little bit of technical difficulties on James Fraser's side. It looks like he's just trying to. Hi, sorry, you can probably see my lips moving and um, not hear any sound coming out. Apologies. Um, yeah, so I'll start again. So thank you, James. Um, and it's great to see so many people joining us today. I'm assuming, Razik, people can hear me now. Yes, good. Loud and clear, loud and clear. Okay. Um, so over the next few minutes, I'm going to provide more detail regards the retirement fund, uh, the special offer and PPS investments itself. I'm going to try and answer two important questions, which is will moving to the new generation section of the PPS retirement annuity fund or what we refer to as section B benefit you? Um, and how does the cost um, involved in the retirement fund impact on your retirement savings? Um, and just to recap on that important point that James raised earlier, um, the two sections of the, of the fund being within the same fund is very important. That interfund conversion is a unique feature of this fund and allows a much simpler transfer between the two sections of the fund to gain many benefits, um, which I'll come to in the next few slides. And it's much shorter uh, and simpler than moving to a, a different retirement fund. So what is the, the benefits of, of section B? Uh, James mentioned a bit more of it, uh, um, a bit of it earlier. It's that um, full control of your investments. It's the flexibility and transparency that it will provide. And it also uh, adds the benefits of being part of the PPS investments platform as a whole. Uh, and I'll mention some of those benefits uh, later on a couple of slides uh, further forward. And importantly, as James mentioned, if you're a qualifying PPS member, you'll earn profit share. But what does flexibility and transparency actually mean? Uh, James mentioned some of it earlier. It basically means that you can change your investment options. You can change your contributions uh, without uh, fear of penalties or costs. Um, it also means that the ongoing fees um, are very clearly explained and, and transparent. And remember, as part of this offer, the administration fees are actually zero. So that's quite clear. Um, you also have the flexibility to choose your retirement date. In the old section of the fund, you'd have chosen a maturity date, and that was the date that the policy actually matured. In this new section of the fund, for any age after 55, you can choose to retire, so you can retire earlier or later. It's your choice and no further penalties or costs would be applied. And then you also have full access to your investment via the PPS Investments Secure Online Portal, where you can view all of your investment information. Um, you can transact, you can download tax certificates, and you can interact with us. Um, a lot of our transactions are um, use electronic signatures, so it's very simple to engage with us. There's no printing out of paper, um, signing documents, scanning them back and, and sending them back. Uh, we focused a lot on ease of use of our systems over the last few years. And for those people who prefer to do everything on their cell phones, we also have an app that you can use to access your, your investments as well that has similar functionality. So on the next slide, 
Um, I'd like to address that first important question um, around is an inch fund conversion to section B of benefit to you? And unfortunately, the, the answer is it depends. There's no one size fits all um, for retirement. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's situation is different. Um, so you need to be clear about what degree of flexibility and choice that you, you require and how that fits into your overall strategic re um, retirement plans. And we do recommend that you get advice from a PPS accredited financial advisor. You can provide holistic advice, taking all of your circumstances into account. We do partner with over two and a half thousand independent financial advisors who could assist. And we also have an in-house team of wealth and financial advisors. However, just to be clear, you can do this yourself. You do not need to get an advisor involved, uh, although we do recommend it. It's an important decision to be making. So if you are comfortable doing it by yourself, um, we'll give you some information later on around our website and our secure site that will enable you to do that. An important component uh, that refers to the second question, um, but not the only component, component, is around the costs and how they impact your retirement savings. Therefore, we've built an easy to use tool called the Retirement Cost Calculator or RCC that illustrates the impact of costs on your retirement savings with a specific focus at the moment on Section A and Section B. So the graph that's shown on your um, screens at the moment shows the output of the RCC calculator. It requires various inputs to come to this output. So it requires the current value of your um, retirement annuity. It requires your maturity date or retirement date, um, any existing debit order information, the termination uh, charge that James mentioned earlier, and then all costs and fees um, known in the industry as an EAC. I'd try to stay away from the acronyms, but that's an effective annual cost. And it basically an, enables a fair comparison of costs between different providers and it's an industry standard. So be sure to have this information to hand when you use the tool. Our last slide in the presentation today provides information of where you can get that information from. Um, all of this information is factual. So can you go back to the previous slide? I just wanted to talk through a couple of things on the graph. Um, yeah, so the information is all factual and allows a fair comparison based on costs and it provides an illustrative output that you can see on the screen. Um, based on the current cost of your retirement savings in Section A and when your retirement savings are transferred to Section B. The blue bar you can see there is if you did nothing, if you left your uh, retirement savings in Section A. And the following four bars show you what the impact would be, of costs would be if you move to Section B immediately in one year, three years and five years. And the important bar to look out for is just the green bars at the top. If there's a green bar at the top, it means that you will have um, higher retirement savings um, um, if you made the change due to the costs of the different costs in the funds. So that's the easy indicator of, of uh, what to look at in this tool. And again, it's indi indicative. There's other things to take into account as well, but that's a simple um, explanation. What is excluded from, from this uh, are additional benefits of the profit share. So those calculations don't include the additional uh, profit share that you may earn if you qualify. I'll also talk to some additional fee benefits that we have on the platform called family fees um, and our sliding scale. And it doesn't take that into account either. So there are additional benefits on top of what this graph is showing. So we go into the next slide. Another important decision is which investment option that you're going to select. This zero fee offer until retirement is linked to the full range of PPS funds. The fund range is comprehensive, covering various risk profiles. We have local and offshore funds. We have passive and active funds and we have multi-managed and single manager funds. So the single manager funds are the ones there that are called the PPS partnership range, and that's our newer range of funds launched in the last um, two years. Um, the multi-manager range of funds, many of them have a, um, a history now of over 13 years uh, and are performing well. <clears throat> the profit share allocation that we mentioned earlier is usually linked um, to two levels uh, PPS investments, the product wrapper which is the retirement annuity or the tax-free investment account. Um, and then the second level is based on the uh, investment option, as in this list of funds that we've got here. Now, due to the zero fee, there's no profit share earned at the product level, but you will earn profit share on the funds that you select out of this range. So just to be clear on that. If we go to the next slide, we wanted to talk around, well, what now? If you make that decision to move, what is your journey with PPS like going forward? And many people know that PPS is usually known for its life insurance solutions, which end at retirement. So it's, it's a relationship that goes through uh, your working life. 
But the expansion of the group into, sh into short-term insurance, medical aid, financial advice and investments has extended that relationship. Um, we call it lifetime mutuality uh, rather than working time mutuality. And this is important because PPS members live much longer than the general population, which means saving enough for retirement can be a challenge. PPS um, members should ideally see their profit share account um, that they earn over their lifetime of membership with PPS as supporting their retirement savings to ensure that they retire um, more comfortably. Um, at the moment, potentially it's seen as a cash lump sum. Um, but with this longevity issue of PPS members, um, we really um, support using it to uh, supplement your retirement income. Once you do decide to retire, PPS Investments provides you with um, income at retirement through either a living annuity or um, a hybrid annuity, which combines the best um, of both the living annuity space and the guaranteed annuity space. In addition, when your PPS uh, profit share uh, vests, it's administered by PPS Investments. So you can see it alongside all of your other investments uh, with PPS Investments. And it's simple then to set up a regular withdrawal if you need that additional income. Um, and financial planning could be provided across all of your investment options. So I mentioned earlier that one of the benefits of moving to Section B uh, was being a client of PPS Investments. And obviously I'd say that. So I just wanted to make clear what those benefits were. Um, so what do you get? Um, we have a full range uh, of products. Um, so I mentioned some of them earlier around tax-free investment accounts, um, retirement annuity funds, preservation funds, uh, living annuities, endowments, um, and um, once you retire that vested profit share account. And that full range is available for both members and non-members. So that is one difference with PPS investments in the group. We offer solutions to both PPS members and non-qualifying members. Um, Qualifying members, as we mentioned earlier, can earn profit share um, at those two different levels. One is at the, the product level and the other one is that investment option level. And we also enable uh, PPS members to link to their family members' investments. So if their family members are non-members, they can link to those investments and earn additional profit share on those assets as well. We also have something that I mentioned earlier around the family network or bulk buying. Uh, I mentioned also earlier around PPS investments as sliding scale. Um, of administration fees. So the more you invest with us, the lower the fee. Um, and by linking um, your family members, members together and their assets, you obviously move along that sliding scale and the whole family benefits um, from that uh, scale of the family's assets. So everybody is better off. Um, so it basically uh, pays to consolidate all of your uh, investment options onto the PPS Investments platform to benefit from that scale. Um, then we also have access to top asset managers, in addition to the PPS fund range that I mentioned earlier. Um, unfortunately, those third party managers aren't part of this special offer, but they're available across the rest of the platform um, for members and non-members to use. And then I mentioned some of it earlier around our digital platforms. We've been focusing on this um, over the last uh, two to three years, uh, making it very easy to do business with us. Uh, the digital signatures are embedded throughout the, the secure site um, and we are over the next um, year to 18 months, moving to a group secure site. So you'll no longer need to uh, log into four uh, different sites for the medical aid, the short-term insurance, the investments and, and the insurance. So that'll be a positive benefit going forward as well. So lots of benefits of just moving to the PPS and pla uh, investments platform as well. And if we go into the next slide, um, this is the important slide that I was talking about earlier. Uh, this is the place to get more information on this offer. Uh, so if we don't answer your questions now, um, or you want to get more information, you want to look at doing things yourself, uh, then um, this is the place to go to. So it's www.pps.co.za forward slash PPSRA. Um, now I mentioned earlier, we believe in the value of good financial advice. Um, and if you have a financial planner uh, or advisor at the moment, and they're not accredited with PPS Investments, um, then we're very happy to work with you and them to get them accredited. Um, so that's the last column on the right that you'll see on the screen there. We're happy to get them accredited. Unfortunately, some advisors are not allowed um, through their own business decisions um, to um, do business with us. Um, so in that case, um, you can do this yourselves. Um, through that DIY option that I mentioned earlier. All of the information is in here around how to use the RCC tool, um, where to get that uh, effective annual cost information, um, and how to follow the interfund conversion process. Um, or we can put you in contact with a PPS um, accredited financial advisor.
Um, so I wanted to leave it there and take as many questions uh, as possible. Um, it's been a bit of a one way conversation. That is one of the challenges with with webinars. Um, you can't see the reaction of the audience or respond to um, uh, what's going on in the audience. So please, if we can look at some of the, the questions. Thanks so much. Thanks Jay. so much, Jay. So, so we have, we quite, have a quite, quite a bit of questions, questions coming, coming through. through. Um, I'm just looking to see which one to send your way first. Mm, I see your one. The first one of the first questions we we have here is are uh, are the fund managers the same people? And I think potentially I could actually even cover that one. Um, so the they are the there are similar fund managers on the current policies that you are in, and um, but not the PPS fund managers where the deal is actually being offered. So if you were to come onto our platform and to move your move to the section B portion, you would actually be able to make use of these particular funds that we have listed for you that James showed earlier. And um, especially within our multi-manage, they cover a range of different managers, all the names you know and the names that's actually regulated and has been very popular in the market. So they, you will definitely have some familiarity with making sure that you're investing in the correct kind of funds and they are all risk profiled according to your needs. So I don't think you'll have any issues with regards to fund managers. Um, the other question that I can pose to James Fraser, how would you know if we qualify for additional profit share? How would we know if we qualify for additional profit share? Sure, I unmuted myself this time so I can respond. Um, yeah, so um, there's a couple of ways to find out. Um, one, if you if you contact the PPS Member Services contact center um, and provide your ID number or member number, they can check if you if you qualify. Um, if you have your login details for the um, what's now called the the ProFit site, um, which is the PPS Insurance um, Online Secure Portal, you can log in there, and that will also show you. Um, but basically by contacting any of the phone numbers or email addresses on the PPS uh, website, somebody will get back to you to, to, to confirm that those details. James, just sticking on the profit share topic, we have another another question here where one of the members says profit share. I already benefit from this. Why is it mentioned today? Um, it's mentioned today because um, it's it's potentially additional profit share. So the, the PPS group has been expanding its offering. I mentioned some of that earlier. Um, it started off in the life insurance space and it's expanded into short term insurance, medical aid and investments. Um, so at the moment you can earn profit share depending on the product that you have in the insurance space. Um, you can then earn additional profit share that's based on the assets you hold with PPS investments. So the more assets and the more products you have with the PPS investments, the more product um, profit share you could earn. And if you don't have any investments with um, PPS investments, it obviously means that you're earning profit share that you weren't earning before. In all of these circumstances, you do need to have a qualifying product, which is an insurance product. Um, um, but it's, we're basically saying that you can earn more profit share. In, in Section A of the fund, um, there used to be profit share when new business was coming in. That's where the revenue was earned. Um, but since the, the section was closed for new business, there's been no revenue earned in that space and no profit share has been uh, allocated from that section of the fund. But by moving into section B, profit share can be allocated. And we also mentioned again due to that linking. Um, so the benefit of moving other assets to the PPS investments platform, and then you can link those uh, family assets uh, to your investment as well, and then you'll earn even more profit share from a PPS investments perspective. Excellent stuff. Thanks so much, James. I'm just looking at one of the other questions here um, that, that one of our members mentions. What are the reasons to not switch from A to B? And um, I have actually put this out to the full panel. Anybody, James, Downey, if you'd also like to talk about this, it's not a problem. Any one of the three of us can handle it. Can, can either take the question? Yeah, well, Rosic, I'm happy to pick that one up. Um, the, you, you need to have access to that uh, retirement calculator that James Fraser mentioned. Because if, for example, uh, you took out your Sunland policy relatively recently, maybe in the 2000s or the, or the 1990s, um, the termination penalty may be too high to be made up by the 
um, lower admin fees and lower investment charges that uh, you would then score on the section B side. So it is it, it it's a, a different size fits everybody. Um, you do need to have access to that termination charge to find out whether it's advantageous to you or not. Thanks so much, James. Um, very nice question that came through just now from one of our members is, does switching imply shifting from Sunlum to PPS credit exposure? James Frazier, I think this one sounds like it's yours. Just, just repeat that last bit, does it? Does switching imply shifting from Sunlum to PPS credit exposure? Um, no, so, so there's there's no link to credit exposure at all. Um, so there's two two different things to talk about here. So one is the intra-fund conversion. So basically there is one fund, the PPS Retirement Annuity Fund, and it basically has two administrators being Sanlam and PPS Investments um, offering slightly different offerings. So that's the intra-fund conversion. It's, it's moving within the same fund from the Sanlam Administer section to the PPS Investments Administer section. Um, a switch um, generally in the investments world talks to moving between investment options. So earlier I showed that fund list of the PPS um, uh, investments fund ranges, the multi-manager range and the partnership fund range. So a switch is normally seen as switching between those. So say, for example, on the Sanlam platform, you are in the um, Alan Gray balanced fund and you now do an inter-fund conversion across to section B, you can now choose uh, to qualify for the zero uh, fee <coughs> um, benefit one of these funds. So you'll be changing from your old investment option that was at, at Sanlam to one of these investment options. And that would generally be known as a switch, but it'll happen as part of the interfund conversion. Now, once you're over to section D of the fund, you can move between any of these investment options and retain that zero fee offering. Um, but if you switch to um, a third party fund, um, so one of the, the, the non-PPS funds, then that um, zero uh, fee would fall away for this specific investment. So I hope that clarifies the difference between the interfund conversion and a switch between investment options. Perhaps I could just clarify on that as well. Uh, the switch does not involve investing in PPS investments and being subject to any uh, credit risk of PPS investments, the company. Your the members' money will be invested in a range of unit trusts, which are listed on that slide. Uh, so it's not on PPS's balance sheet or PPS investments balance sheet. It's actually invested in protected unit trusts, which are protected by the um, Collective Investment Schemes Control Act. Uh, so the money is completely safe. Uh, you're, you're not subject to any credit exposure on PPS investments whatsoever. James Downey, while I have you here, another question that I see uh, being seen through. Why is the penalties of changing so high? Yeah, that's that's a historical, um, I guess, challenge that the industry has faced. Historically, what happened was when you bought a policy from uh, an insurance company, the insurance company paid the broker or the advisor the full fees, brokerage, commissions for the entire period of the policy, maybe 40 years, in the first two years of the policy uh, to that broker, and then recoups those costs over the life of the policy. So that is why these termination fees are charged, because the insurance company has yet to recoup the entire uh, cost of the commissions and, and fees that they front end loaded at the beginning of your policy. So that is why these uh, so-called penalties or termination charges diminish over time and why uh, hopefully many of the members listening now will have very low termination charges because that uh, front end loaded cost has been whittled away over time. And thanks so much, James. Um, another one of the questions I see here, where do we get information on termination charge penalty in relation to the year taking out the RA or individual RAs? 
So information on where do we actually, where can they get the information to find out what is their penalty? How would they actually find the calculator? And um, if I might actually, we actually on that very slide right now, showing, um, I think the, the important part is if you take a look at that, the first portion that says click here, it'll actually show you that is how you can access the tool that will be able to do the comparison. And just below that you'll see, thanks. And just below that you'll see the email address and contact number for this for Sunlum's call center where you'll be able to make contact with them. And as a client, you could actually just pick up the phone or pop them an email to say you would like to have your interfund quote. And they will then publish you with the information. So the cost comparison or what it costs you at the moment, as well as the penalty components. So you can see what is the fee that they're going to charge you if you want to move over and start earning profit to you again on our side. And then you'll put you'll input those two amounts into the retirement cost calculator that will actually give you that good off that um, James Frazier showed you earlier where it tells you um, this is where you're sitting right now. It's actually if you were to move, you would be so much better off. At the end, you would actually have more to retire with than what you would have if you were to stay exactly where you are now. So that would cover a lot of that aspects. I see there's a lot of a lot of questions in particular where people have asked about my cash out is in two, is in 2025. Does it make sense to switch now? I'm just reading a few of the questions that are very, very similar. Um, my date of entry was 94. How do I find out what fees cost commissions were deducted from my monthly contributions over the past 26 years? I also I um, currently have a son on PPS RA. Um, then I can convert to the new generation RA with PPS for no administration fee. Correct. That is correct if you make use of one of our underlying funds. If so, any loss of penalties, moving funds, if so, how much? Um, just in a lot of those questions all all stick it on the same topic of what are the fees that it and and the and the one thing that's very important to know is that each person has a different fee. Everybody's situation and policy is completely, you know, in um an individual one and tailor to your particular needs. So um your whatever your fee is, the only way we'll know what that is is if we actually request that information. If you request the interfund quote from Sunlam, as well as the EAC report, which gives you your cost comparison component. So you can actually see this is what it's what it's going to cost me. That is literally what that EAC does. It shows you this is what it costs me for having my policy year right now. And then taking that penalty component into consideration and then comparing it with is it actually worthwhile to move or is it better for me to stay? because not everybody would actually be in the, in the in a better position to move. It could be that the penalty is potentially still a little too high, that it might make sense for you to only move maybe in a year or three years or something along those lines. But at least you have a far better understanding of where you sit with this particular situation and when you'll be able to take advantage of actually moving out and linking back to the profit share component and all the other amazing benefits that the PPS group does offer today. Razik, can I answer a couple of the questions that have come through? Uh, I see one of the questions is, are the funds on the uh, list that James Fraser showed earlier, uh, Regulation 28 compliant? Just to explain that to people who may not uh, know what that means, it is a retirement annuity, so one's investments have to comply with a section of the Pension Funds Act called Regulation 28, for example, you can't have more than 75% of your fund in shares. Uh, you can't have more than 30% offshore and a whole list of other um, of constraints. Many of the funds on uh, the investment list, perhaps uh, we could just go to that slide uh, of the PPS fund range, um, uh, are Regulation 28 compliant. Um, but some of them aren't. For example, at the bottom of the first list, the PPS equity fund, that is all equity and or all shares. So if you wanted to invest in that, you could only put 75% of your fund in that one and you'd have to put 25% of your fund in uh, something like the flexible income fund or the bond fund 
uh, at the top of the list. Um, the, the PPS Global Equity Feeder Fund, again, is offshore shares only. Uh, therefore, you could only have 30% of your fund in that one, and you'd have to mix it and match it. Uh, there is a tool on the on the site to enable you to do exactly that matching to come up with a combination uh, that that suits you and is is compliant. Another question that was asked was uh, why don't I just do a, a so-called section 14 transfer out? Uh, some apparently some Sunlum advisors uh, are saying that it's better to do a section 14 transfer. It is a way of leaving the fund, but a section 14 is leaving the fund and going to another retirement annuity fund. Let's say uh, the Alan Gray or the Coronation uh, Retirement Annuity Fund. That involves probably a six month process. Section 14 is, is again an, a section of the Pension Funds Act and it involves cashing out waiting for a considerable amount of paperwork to be done by both the outgoing and the incoming fund before you can reinvest in the new fund. That means that if you choose that option, you stand or you, you run the risk of being out of the market for a good six months. And uh, depending on what that six months looks like, uh, could be extremely harmful to you to be out of the market. This is an intra-fund conversion. It takes uh, a very much shorter space of time uh, because you're not leaving one fund and going to another. You're um, staying within the same fund. And if I could just address another question, I've been looking through the Q&A. Um, uh, one of the, the points made was that in that PPS range of funds, there isn't a smooth bonus fund. And that's correct. Uh, the smooth bonus funds that the insurance companies offer where they smooth the returns over time, uh, especially people who are a bit nervous of the fluctuations of the market, we don't have a smooth bonus fund. But what we do have is three or four funds on that list labeled either conservative or cautious, which would exhibit very similar characteristics, uh, invest, investment return characteristics, to that smooth bonus fund, but would not have the uh, capital guarantee of never going negative. Um, although one or two of them are cash plus funds, which will also neg never go negative. Thanks, Rosie. Thanks so much. Um, I see we have, I have one last question that I'd like to pose to James Fraser. Um, has the savings of PPS members who are professional being diluted by people who joined without being professional, meaning that they pose a higher risk for, for needing payouts? Um, yes, the simple answer is no. Um, there is no pooling of um, members' assets. Each member's um, assets are, are their own, um, and it's based on whatever the, the value of the fund is when they decide to exit those funds is the value that they will individually receive. Um, so definitely there's there's there's, um, there's no cross contamination there at all. And what I would say from a profit share perspective uh, in in the PPS investments platform as a whole, I said that we um, support both members and non members on the platform is the more non members that you have that are adding to the, the profitability of PPS investments, the more profit share that is to allocate to the PPS members. So that's the one benefit of having both the non-members and the members on the platform, um, is that it actually benefits the PPS member um, because they earn that profit share. Completely agree. I think um, maybe also just an important thing to highlight is that when we're talking about um, um, risk payouts or diluting a pool in particular, I think you, um, Maria, might have been looking at it from a from a, a risk side, a risk policy side. And um, on that particular side, if we're talking SPPI cover, things like that, those are still only, that's always going to be only available to to actual members that qualify. So um, the only ability to actually have any kind of non-member component is via our investments platform that on, on PPS investments. Like I say, with, and as James mentioned, there's no risk that we actually carry on that particular side. 
Rosic, if I could just answer or add to that, wearing my uh, director hat um, rather than my my trustee hat, um, we we had a, a meeting of the Holdings Trust last night, uh, where things like the membership qualifications are always discussed, and we will never relax that professional component on the risk side. It's only on the investment side that uh, non-members are allowed to enjoy the, the, the benefits. Thanks so much, James. Um, I see we've done well over time and I'd really just like to thank all the people for sh sharing so much and asking so many questions. I, th I think that there's a, we've had really, really good responses from, from our members wanting to find out and understand more. Um, please know that what we will do is we will make sure that each and every one of these questions are addressed and answered and we will actually post all of that information and make sure that you receive it. So please look out for for um, emails from us in the in the near future where we will be sending you a copy of this particular session that we've had where um, um, James Squared has on managed to answer so many wonderful questions for us as well as the unanswered questions we didn't have enough time to actually get to. Um, I'm absolutely amazed to be sitting with, I think there, there was something like 66 questions posted holistically, and I think we managed to get through about not even half of that. So we will definitely have our work out for us to make sure that we provide those answers. I think for me, just in, within wrapping up, um, I'll ask if there's any final comments from James Downey as well as James Frazier before we say our final goodbyes. James Downey. Uh, Rosic, thanks. From my point, I think there was one uh, one thing that I, I forgot to mention is that the, re the Retirement Annuity Fund trustees are all independent of PPS Investments or PPS Insurance Company. Um, I'm I'm an independent director uh, of uh, the two the two companies. Um, but I'm not employed by PPS and nor uh, are any of the trustees or the principal officer of the fund. We're all independent of PPS uh, and I think three or four of us are RA fund members ourselves. And so uh, we're, we're very much involved in this uh, because it affects us as well as uh, 70,000 other members. Thank you very much for, for everybody's attention. Thanks so much, James Downey. James Fraser. No, no, just thanks for everyone's time. Um, it's great to see so many people connected. Um, and if you have any further questions or queries, please um, give us a call or drop us an email. Um, yeah, I'll just go to the website, find our contact details, and we'll be very willing to assist. Thanks so much, James. And lastly, from me, I'd just like to once again also say thanks so much to everybody for for attending, for making the time, for posting all of these questions, for interacting with us and making sure you are raising your concerns and voices and getting answers from us because that's literally what we're here to do. Um, I just want to point out one last thing is that and please go visit our website in particular. Take a look and see what it is, what it's about. It is actually very important that you equip yourself to make sure that you have your retirement cost calculation to know that you are on the right track, whether it is moving or staying but make sure that you are properly informed. If you, if the if the process of doing it yourself seems to be a little um, overwhelming or you're not sure how the process works, we have thousands literally of PPS accredited financial advisors that can easily assist you in doing that. Um, so please make contact with us if you, if you would like us to even assist you with it from a direct point of view. Um, give us a call or on our, at our call saying to us or pop us an email. It will all be on the, all that information would have already been on the invite and how to get hold of us directly. And we'll be happy to actually make sure we can assist you. We won't be able to provide you any advice from a fund, choosing, selecting a fund, one of those um, funds that um, James had up on earlier on the screen, but um, we can we can help you. You can see what the risk profiles are and you can understand what you want to do. And I suppose that's probably the big thing where an accredited advisor can actually help you because retirement planning is not something that should be taken lightly. It's actually quite a process. And our members, unfortunately, you guys live far longer than the normal folk out there. So we do need to make sure that that's protected properly. So once again, thank you from all of us, from PPS Investments, from PPS Group, 
Thank you for spending the time and interacting with us, and we hope to hear much more from you soon. Thanks so much and goodbye.